Hey, it's Chris from Data Rescue Labs. Uh, sometimes last year I made a video uh, about Galaxy S6 that had a um, problem with the power management and the phone wasn't turning on. Since then I was getting a lot of emails in regards to that particular video. Um, I guess a lot of people thought that was the problem with their phone and they'll be sending it in for that issue. And so I gotta make this video now to kind of correct uh, the first video, not to correct maybe, but um, to talk about other issues on the Galaxy uh, S6. Uh, so what I have today is the S6 Edge, which is essentially almost the same as the S6. So this phone, we're gonna do a chip off. Um, there used to be another method of doing the chip off using a different tool, but uh, since then they released their own tool. Uh, so I'm gonna use this new tool that, uh, well, new adapter for new software uh, that can actually read the uh, 6S chip. Uh, once it's removed from the motherboard. The work is a little bit different, the temperatures are different, and the, um, the workflow is slightly altered, but uh, other than that, the uh, chip of procedure is pretty much the same. Okay, let's go to the video. So this is the Galaxy 6S Edge. Uh, I've already taken it apart, and I've, I've tried fixing it uh, first. This phone had no power, but it appeared to have some kind of internal short on the CPU. Uh, so I didn't want to waste any more time. So this is the, the memory chip. It's a UFS chip. It's a ser it's a ser serial chip. Um, and uh, here's the um, our V workstation. We're gonna start it now, and we're gonna start um, removing the chip. These particular chips, the UFS chips, they're, they're pretty sensitive to heat. So I have to change the profile on my uh, V workstation to kind of adjust for this chip because uh, I've damaged it before uh, with a too high of a temperature so you gotta be pretty careful with uh, with these chips but uh, as you can see it's, it's a quick lift and we got the chip off and here I'm just cleaning it up a little bit uh, with some underfill and uh, retaining the pads on the old uh, the old method was to re the chip and it was bit more work and then the uh, tool is pretty expensive so uh, we prefer this this tool it's quicker so I'm just cleaning up here and that's the chip there so we're gonna use easy JTAC plus I'm gonna put it in this adapter here Close the lid and uh, we can plug it in and we can see if we can detect it. And here we are with Easy JTAG software. We're going to go to UFS tab and you're going to detect the chip. And the chip's detected. So the next step is to um, start reading it. So you have a few options here. Uh, we can select certain partitions or, or certain size, but we're gonna go for the full image because we want the entire chip. And just gotta click on the read button and uh, select the name and save it. And this process is pretty slow. I think this took a few hours to, uh, to complete. Uh, here it is uh, reading the chip. Now that the image is complete, uh, we can go over to Celebrate UFED, we can start a new project, we can select Advanced, as usual, select a model number, which is G925W8, which is a Canadian model. Uh, we got physical, and uh, here's our dump, and we can start decoding. You can also modify the chain if you're looking for different type of evidence, but uh, we're gonna leave it uh, pretty intact. But here's the data coming through right now. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to have a new video coming up soon. Uh, this one will be uh, with a Nokia Windows phone that uh, I can't perform a chip off on the laptop by the council. So uh, I'm going to look for an ISP pinout using a donor phone and then connect to that device, the original device, the, the, the evidence device, and pull the data that way. It should be an interesting video.